Hello, today we're going to look at how we can make soluble salts and in fact how we can make a pure dry sample of soluble salts. And the way we would do this is we would react some acid with either an insoluble, well, with an insoluble substance which would either be uh, a metal oxide, it could be a metal hydroxide, metal hydroxide, or it could be a metal carbonate. All of these would be examples of insoluble substances that you could use. With the metal carbonate, you would get the additional formation of carbon dioxide gas as well. However, we are going to look at a way of, build, of making the soluble salt based around this idea here. Acid plus base is salt and water. And the particular example is sulfuric acid plus copper oxide will give us copper, sulfate and water. We know that sulfuric acid makes sulfate salts. We've learned about this in our previous video. So we have a sulfate. The copper is the positive ion that would be in our salt there. So we would have copper sulfate. That's the positive ion. That's just an abbreviation there for the word positive. And we would get, of course, water. And that water, if we want the crystals, if we want the pure, dry, soluble salt, we would need to get rid of that water. So how is this process done? Well, let's take a look. First thing we do is we have, in this case, our sulfuric acid in a beaker. And what we're doing is we're heating the sulfuric acid to increase the rate of reaction. We have to heat it gently and make sure it doesn't boil. Once, we, once we've done that, we can remove our heat and then add our copper oxide. So a copper oxide is like a black powder. And we can add that in. And once we've added that in, we would give that a stir. And we would get the formation of our copper sulfate solution. And copper sulfate is blue, so you'd see a blue color. If all the copper oxide disappears, that means it has all reacted and we would need to add a little bit more copper oxide because we need to make sure all of the acid has reacted. So we add some more copper oxide, give it another stir and if there is, if the reaction has finished, there will be some copper oxide left at the bottom of the container. Now, we can make a note of that. So we add copper oxide, we say we add it in excess and that's so that we know all of the acid has reacted. So there is a complete reaction in that beaker. We do need to remove the unreacted copper oxide. So we do that by filtering and filtering will separate out the two, the copper sulfate solution and the copper oxide powder. And after that, we will be left with our copper sulfate. So we would filter to remove unreacted copper oxide and that would leave us with our pure copper sulfate solution. Now, that hasn't give a, given us our crystals. What we need to do is transfer the copper sulfate solution into what's called an evaporating dish. So we place that in an evaporating dish and we would then need to warm that up. There is one of two ways of warming it up, but this way we're showing here is by using what's called a water bath. So we have a beaker of water that's gently boiling away and we would put the evaporating dish on top of that beaker and the warm steam or the hot steam from underneath would warm the dish and therefore warm the contents and the copper sulfate solution would start to evaporate. You would see the formation of crystals or start seeing the formation of crystals on the side and once you see that you would allow the apparatus to cool and then you would leave the dish to evaporate or the solution to evaporate for at least 24 hours, it usually takes maybe more two or three days in fact, but we would leave it to uh, evaporate away and therefore we would end up with a lot more crystals once all the solution or the water in the solution has evaporated away. And if you were to see what it looked like actually from an experiment, it looks a little bit like this. So it's pretty cool. You get to see some really nice blue uh, crystals that are copper sulfate crystals. Okay, so this is how we would make our copper sulfate crystals. In other words, a sample of dry soluble, a dry sample of soluble salt. So let's go through the steps so you have a note of those if you need them. The first one is to add acid to a beaker and heat gently. Remember, don't boil it. We would add our copper oxide and stir it till it no longer disappears. In other words, we would add copper oxide in excess. And the reason we do that is to make sure that all of the acid has reacted. All of the acid has reacted. And in fact, if you remember back from a few videos back, we could describe the acid as the limiting reagent. The acid is limiting because the reaction stops when the acid has run out. Next step is to filter with care. We make sure the solution doesn't spill over the filter paper when we filter. And the reason why we filter is to remove any excess or any unreacted copper oxide. 
that would interfere with the making of the crystals if we left it in there. We can then pour the clear blue copper sulfate solution into what we call an evaporating dish or an evaporating basin it's called sometimes and then we would use a water bath to evaporate the water from the solution and we would do that until the crystals start to form. Sometimes we call that the crystallization point. We can use a water bath but another method we could use is using an electric heater. These are designed to evaporate solutions. The ones we use in labs are designed to evaporate solutions. Then we would allow it to cool before we would leave it to evaporate for a few days, usually a few days, but at least 24 hours. And that is so that the crystals can form. And in fact, the slower evaporation allows larger crystals to form. Once we have left it for a few days, we can remove the crystals with a spatula and we can pat it dry with some filter paper. So then we have our pure, dry copper sulfate crystals. In this example, it's copper sulfate. But remember, it depends on the acid you use and the insoluble substance you use. Depend That depends or gives you the crystals that you're going to get at the end.